on a high level note, I think it it speaks to North Korea's continued honing, honing of its capability, sharpening its missile slash nuclear weapons program, and still remaining resolute no matter what. And that's literally, and you know, when they say they'll try soon, obviously we don't know exactly when that'll be um, unless they make that explicit, but I think they are nonetheless resolute and they don't care about what international law does say or, or alternatively doesn't say. Because of the Ukraine war, um, there is Russia's going to veto whatever the United States, sorry, United UN Security Council wants to do when it comes to like how to respond to North Korea. And I think China will do the same thing. So in that regard, North Korea, it, there's really not a lot of movement for um, the UN to really take action and be on a united front about North Korea, unfortunately. How do they ensure that like they can trust in their local authorities? And I, I I feel like every time in this case, if we're talking about North Korea, every time that North Korea fires a missile of some sort and there is possibility that it may either fly over Hokkaido or be in, uh, landing within like Japan's EEZ, territorial waters, whatever, um, that people, I'm not entirely sure people, how serious the Japanese people in this case or Korean people or South Korean people will take when it comes to like following um, guidance from authorities. Japanese people are now looking at not just like North Korea as the main, you know, provocateur or um, I guess like assertive or aggressive, you know, neighbor, but also China. And that's where I think that's a real dilemma for a place like Okinawa, kind of good to go back on my point about the J alert system, where I'm thinking that when they look at all these, you know, different developments, perhaps this is really you know, prompting local officials to be a lot more proactive about how to make evacuations and the J alerts more effective. あんまりはいそこから左側まで<音声><音声><音声>